A little over a week ago, President Trump announced a new policy towards Cuba, undoing several steps taken during the Obama administration. One of the president's critics on this new policy, Congressman Rick Crawford of Jonesboro and I sat down for a conversation. President Trump reversing some of the thaw in relations with Cuba that was started uh, during the Obama administration. You voiced some serious concerns about this from an economic perspective, uh, as well as from a national security perspective. Let's start with the national security concerns first. Well, here's this island nation 90 miles off our coast that we have essentially left alone for the last 50 odd years, let's say since 1959 essentially, and nothing has improved there uh, in regards to our national security or their economy or any of that. And so we keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So what we saw in 2014 as President Obama, regardless of what anybody particularly thinks of President Obama, um, this is not uh, an endorsement of or an indictment of what he did. I don't necessarily agree with the approach that he took, not involving Congress. I think he should have involved Congress. I'm not sure that he should have um, brought the Pope into the mix and allowed him to broker the kind of deal that he ended up putting together. But be that as it may, it did lead to, as you mentioned, a thawing of that relationship. Now, I think that's actually a good thing because now we're in a position to affect positive change in Cuba, or we were. This scaling back, rolling back, um, really doesn't even poll well, quite frankly. I mean, I've seen polls uh, that's, that show that over 60 percent of Cuban-American um, folks in South Florida, which about two-thirds of the Cuban-American population reside in South Florida, that they actually favor normalization. And if you take that out over the, the entire nation, about 70-plus percent favor normalization with Cuba. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about your bill uh, and Senator Bozeman is working on the same type of legislation on the Senate side here to uh, basically to find ways to open up those agricultural markets for uh, for Arkansas farmers as well as for other Americans here too. Have you sensed that with the president's change in policy on Cuba that you are seeing an opportunity to maybe move forward with that, with that legislation? Have you had some of the members say, hey, let's put this on the fast track and make this move? Do you see some progress? I see, uh, most notably, I see in the Senate a travel bill with 55 senators on it. When have 55 senators ever agreed on anything in the recent past? So that's progress. So if you've got the travel piece coming to us from the Senate, and Senator Bozeman is over there working the, the, essentially the counterpart of my bill uh, to lift the finance restriction, uh, the credit restriction on ag, you, you've got a good one too there. If you limit travel, you limit the, the revenue potential for Cubans to spend money on U.S. ag commodities. The two go hand in hand. So you need to be able to say yes to ag, which I think he left the door slightly ajar for us to do that. Using H.R. 525 addresses the concerns of the folks down in South Florida who had some issues with you know, trading with certain entities that had uh, military ownership. So we, we've taken that into consideration. That's number one. But if you don't leave, uh, leave us an opportunity on travel, then how are we going to have our, our businesses be able to go down there, interact with these uh, uh, Cuban buyers, and affect that in a meaningful way? So the fact is we really kind of need both. It will be difficult otherwise for us to, if you say, yep, you can trade, but you really can't go there and trade, then what have we achieved? So I think you've got 55 senators on the travel bill right now. They could pass that tomorrow, send it to the House, and I feel very, very confident that it would pass the House. And, and, I, and I have every reason to think that in, in that scenario, the president would sign that into law. If you're going to allow the travel, why restrict the credit restriction uh, uh, or the, uh, on, on uh, U.S. agricultural goods? So then you've got the, you know, the complimentary H.R. 525, which is my bill in the House and Senator Bozeman's bill in the Senate, that can go concurrently or we can pass it you know, in the, in the House, send it to them, let them say yes, and then move it. I mean, these are things that are not, we're not talking about real heavy lifts. And there's a lot of support for it. So when, when could we see some of that legislative activity that you're talking about? Are you, are you pushing to make that happen as soon as possible? Is this a later in the year thing or is this a beyond that? Well, we're, we're, we're you know, gaining co-sponsors all the time and we've, we've sort of held it in abeyance, kind of waiting for the announcement of you know, Trump policy with Cuba. Um, and, and there is a 30-day window in there where we can continue to um, interact with, with the White House and the national security staff and kind of 
press our case, but what we would like to, and what we've been waiting for, quite frankly, is is a, a clear um, uh, articulation of, of what his policy will be in Cuba so that we know how to go forward. And so, I, as I said, I think there's an opportunity, I think there's a window open for us to move H.R. 525, and we're going to do that. We'll try to be a lot more aggressive about it now that we know uh, what the president's policy is. Final question for you. Uh, you've had a couple of people at least pop up and say that they're going to run against you for Congress next year. We'll see whether or not they put their name on the dotted line and pay a filing fee. Uh, I guess I'd like to ask you officially, are you planning to run for re-election in 2018? I am. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and sign and pay my filing fee, so yeah.